You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling Oklahoma stories through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof. Let's get into today's episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hoon here, your host, back with another episode down at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame today to tell you, I mean, a story about a brand that you definitely would have seen around the state. You've probably drank from the bottles of Osaka, and, you know, there's, I mean, you just see it everywhere. You're, there's a great Made in Oklahoma partnership that we're going to talk about that you guys do a lot of stuff with. But Tanner Hansen's with me today to tell that story, um, a wonderful Oklahoma story. Even if you've driven into downtown, we had the marathon recently, if you've driven into downtown and you've definitely driven by the Osaka plant, I guess would be the way play, a plant would be the right way to say it. Yep. I mean, yeah, with a the, with the giant water tower and um, it's right next to Lively Beer Works, which is a big purple building. You can't miss that one. So, Tanner, thanks so much for, for coming in and, and I'm excited to share the story today to just to dive in to the family history and, and how this becomes and how this happens because, you know, we know each other and I, I know your story and... We're going to dive into that as well and, and how you get to kind of your position now and, and all of the other little positions that you've gone through. But I had a little tour of the facility. It's uh, It never stops. It's moving and shaking. It's great to see. It's fascinating. Things move at a fast pace. And, and it's not just little bottles of water that you guys do. No, it's not. So, big, big old jugs, five gallons. Exactly. So before we dive into kind of the history of the business, um, tell me a little bit about you. Kind of how did, you know, how did... You know, you were born and raised in Oklahoma City and then... Born and raised here. Yeah. Uh, did my undergrad here, did a little bit of postgrad. Um, I've got a beautiful wife, and I think I outkicked my coverage on her. Uh, she reminds me every day. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> uh, I've, got, <laughs> I've got two dogs and uh, happily married for about two years. Um, that's kind of the... Oh, and I, I love playing golf and... Uh, traveling and listening to music and yeah. playing a little bit here and there. Uh, that's kind of a a little quick and dirty of yeah. kind of who I am. But, um, you know, it, legacy has always been a huge part of my family. And being able to be a part of a family business is really special, um, especially one that's been around for over 50 years. Um, and 1971, is it was our year of inception. And last year was our 50th anniversary. Um, hopefully we'll do something special for it soon, but, um, you know, we didn't, uh, do anything too crazy. Still, still trying to kind of recover from a crazy 2020 year. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, uh, we moved past it. I think the world's kind of calming down a little bit, which is nice and yeah. really refreshing. Yeah, that quote, getting back to normal, keeps coming around and actually starting to feel yeah. like, you know, like the last two, everyone's like, 2019 was literally felt like a month ago, but it hasn't. It was two, feels like an eternity two, ago now. Ago. It's crazy. But back to kind of, I mean, touch on your, your, your you a little bit. Um, I mean, I got two dogs too. What are your dog's names? Bo. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they're both, actually, they're both chocolate labs okay. and they're both like half siblings. So same mom, different dad, uh, Bo and Charlie. That's an interesting mix, having both like sort of siblings and like... It's kind of cool. I kind of wish we'd had two like from our from the litter or like from, yeah. you know, the same, you know, lineage or whatever, because I have friends who have like two brothers or two sisters and they're either great or they're either like a terror, but they get used to each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're they're definitely a bit of both. You know, they, they like to rough house pretty good yeah. and you cannot keep them out of the water. Uh, I think Charlie, she'll just hop in the pool and just swim around. And she did that in December. And I was like, you know, that water's like 40 <laughs> degrees and she just doesn't care. Right. And then when she comes out of the water, you don't be anywhere near it. Oh, she's no. She can cover you and It's like a, one water. of those uh, sprinkler machines that sprays you. Definitely. Uh, so, I mean, those two hunting dogs, right? They're great for hunting. Great for hunting. Uh, I didn't want to go that route. No. Uh, I don't do a lot of hunting myself, uh-huh. or at least with, with dogs. Um, Every once in a while, I'll go uh, bird hunting, but we'll use other yeah, dogs yeah. that the facility provides. I just, uh, I got Bo about five years ago, and I just kind of wanted a, a companion. I got him right after I graduated and always wanted my own dog. And then uh, my, wife, my wife's, a couple years ago, she's like, how would you feel if we got another one? I'm like, I need another dog. Like, I need a hole in the head. 
And well, we got a second dog despite my best efforts. And now I also love that dog too. That's exactly the same story as my two dogs. Yeah. <laughs> you get one. Yeah. I get, but we bought a house. First thing we got a dog. And then a couple of years later, my wife's like, she needs a friend. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Like, she's like, yeah. She said, and that's the end of it, right? You just you can't fight that. It's, it's exactly. Yeah. She's like, oh, I didn't get myself another dog. I just got our dog a dog. Yeah. <laughs> what are your dogs' names? Uh, Savvy. Uh, so we Savvy and Greg's, um, and they're two girl dogs. But my wife got to pick the first one, and I got to pick the name. So we're golfers. I picked Savvy as Seriano yep. Balsteros because. Sevi was like the closest name that kind of was like, oh, the only name that wasn't like, people don't really know that it's a golfer, right? If you're not a golfer, you'd be like, oh, it's a cool name. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're like Arnie, Tiger, you know, Jack or whatever, you know, you could name your dog after legends and someone's like, oh, you're a golfer because you, you know, definitely named your dog after yeah. Tiger Woods or whatever. But so I got away with that one. And I didn't tell my wife it was a, it was a golfer until like a week later. And she's like, you know, I really like that name. And I was like, yes. And then I, the second one, I got to pick the dog and she got to pick the name. And I, I've always had boy dogs growing up and I wanted a boy dog. And we, you know, we had the first one as a girl. So I picked this dog. Great. Going to have a boy in the litter. And there wasn't any dogs left. So my wife named Greg's is, and you'll find this funny too. Greg's is a bakery in the UK. Really? It's a bakery franchise in the UK. And my wife loves this place called Greg's. And they do like sauce rolls and pastries. And I mean, it's just super cheap and it's great food, especially when you're hungover. <laughs> and they do this like chicken bake. And it's just like a square yeah. kind of chicken pot pie, right? But in like a bake pasty style form. And it's just, they're like a dollar fifty each. So game changer. So for Yum. 10 bucks, you, you are filled. And so my wife says, like, we were walking through, like, a grocery store one day. And she's like, we're going to name our dog Greg's. And I, like, lost it. I was like, you're kidding me, right? Like, I was laughing my head off. And she's like, no, I think it's great. I was like, yeah, I guess it is. So we have two girls. Which Greg's was supposed to be a boy um, with a boy name. So we have two girl dogs, two golden doodles, and they are my world, right? You, like, we don't have kids, yeah. and the dogs are everything. You know, you could get away with it. Uh, you know, Greg Norman. Mm-hmm. Greg's, so a yeah. little, little loose association. A little loose association. It could work. But I'm fight. I'm fighting her because she wants another one, right? Oh, wow. It doesn't stop. Good You're luck. gonna, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and like for you, like I mean, my doodles, they're not as big. I and mean, the first one's kind of like sixty-ish pounds, but the chocolate labs, they're big, right? Oh, they're, so they're, they're about hundred pounds. Size is on size is on your, you know, on your side because like you know, if you get another one of those, like it's time to get a big house, right? You can't fit two dogs and two humans in the same bed. No. We've tried and failed. And then it's the terrible. car and all the other stuff. Uh-huh, it's just uh-huh. it's not worth it. But uh, we could talk about dogs and golf forever. It's probably, we should probably start talking about oh, yeah, the business right. that you work in for the people listening. You know, we're, we're a few minutes in and uh, how does, like, what, what I guess would be starting out like your earliest memory of, of the family business, of, of a business that you've grown up around and in? My earliest, so we have, a uh, an early 1930s uh, Ford pickup and it's like a flatbed with two uh, kind of um, long wood panels on either side it's mm-hmm. like a barrier yeah and they would uh, haul water in that uh, uh, pickup and it's got you know Eureka Springs on it yeah. and I, I can't remember who drove it uh, but I was in second grade and they drove that car down to uh, my school when I was I was attending uh, for um, like a special celebration that day. I can't remember what the theme yeah. was, but the, the car was there, and I guess it was. I think it may have been something along the lines of you know celebrate the '30s or you know past Americans mm-hmm. that were in their '30s that helped shape the United States and building with the theme yeah. my family thought it'd be a cool idea to bring the truck down there and have all the kids pose on and it was really cool but i think the teachers were more appreciative of it than the kids were that's uh awesome. that's probably the earliest memory i have that's associated with the company um but actually being there probably a lot of sweeping floors <laughs> and a lot of cleaning <laughs> trash cans uh i definitely yeah. you know i uh, I started at the very bottom of the barrel, and they said, "Well, you're gonna you're gonna learn every aspect of this business, starting from the ground up, and you know, get a broom because yeah. you're gonna be doing a lot of sweeping." And they just said it builds character, and I got a lot of it. I got a lot, I got a lot of character. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you do you guys still have that truck? Oh yeah, we yeah. still have it. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. In a while. It's in a protective garage. Yeah, it's in a museum now. Right? Pretty it's much, in, it's in the family museum. Yeah. Uh, but no, we still have it, and you know, we'll kind of we'll. Uh, 
make sure it gets like a little test drive every once in a while, keep yeah. everything running smoothly. But we, we still have it. It's cool. Yeah. Well, it's great for branding, isn't it? And, and mm-hmm. just to get it out and maybe drive around or out for a photo shoot or yeah. the, the, family, you know, the family photo or a team photo in front of it. You know, it's well, that's exactly it what signifies we, a lot of cool things. Yeah, that's exactly what we did a couple of years ago. We did a, a fleet photo. So we got all of our trucks out into the parking lot and kind of yeah. staged them looking cool. And then someone had a drone and they flew up there and took like a big wide picture of the plant and all the fleet and then the truck was right in the middle of it yeah that's badass yep. I love that so so started then sweeping floors and yes. I mean in that warehouse there was a lot of floor space to be sweeping around uh, about 10,000 square feet of floor <laughs> so where how old were you when you started sweeping floors and then what was the first kind of I guess promotion you got from sweeping floors where did you go after that I, I started about 12 um, you know this my parents say hey, it's, it's a good time for you to start uh, start getting a job and learning how to take care of yourself learning mm-hmm. what the value of a dollar bill is and responsibility and all that. Um, and after I started sweeping floors and getting the hang of it, it's kind of a, a mixed bag, if you will, because it was, I would also help on the production line sometime. Mm-hmm. But I think the real track was I would, uh, I moved into the cooler department. So the water dispensers that those five gallon jugs sit on, that's where I moved into and I learned how to clean them take them apart, service them, uh, and just overall just how they worked and the inventory of them. And yeah. then after that, it was probably a bit more production. And then I got my forklift license when I was 16, 17-ish. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever driven a forklift, but I have it's... A, but it does look... When people do it well, it looks cool. It is very cool. Right? And I do it's not spinning do it, around. And with, I do, do not do on the it steering well. wheel as well, like to spin around yep. with? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was carrying a pallet of glass bottles. Oh, geez. And I took a turn too fast in front of my boss then at the time, and that whole pallet just <sighs> went lopsided. And just a bunch of glass, and yeah. everyone just, like, stopped and just looked. And I'm just like, <laughs> crap. <laughs> And like, you know what? Maybe forklifting is not for you. <laughs> and that was the last day I was officially on the forklift. But more valuable lesson to always drive carefully. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The fork truck thing is cool. Like, you know, it's, it, there's a lot going on, right? You know, you're moving around and, and then you're moving the pallet up and down. And there, there's a serious skill with how fast those guys load trucks, whether it's water you, or other pallets. Like, it, You definitely have to because we've got, oh, I think, about seven or eight uh, forklifts in our plant. And, um, you know, two of them are devoted to loading up uh, trailers that back to our loading docks. And mm-hmm. they, they'll pick up 22 pallets at, at a time. And we've got eight yeah. trucks that come in on a daily basis to get loaded so we got to be in and out pretty efficient quickly there and on the other hand uh, we've got 30 route trucks give or take uh, that come in every day and we have to unload um, the empty five gallons that they uh, picked up from the route and then reload um, whatever their route pertains for the next day and we got to yeah. do it quickly because they're they're lining up and got to get them out parked so that they're ready to go with the next day so yeah. it's definitely i mean you got to definitely watch where you're going in the plant because there's there's a forklift about everywhere you look right yeah i mean like i said <clears throat> kind of reference it earlier that being in there and seeing everything moving around and i mean it's you guys are busy right you know yeah. you're on a deadline you've got to look you know the trucks come in from the day out you know that you've got to load them ready for the morning and, and just kind of keep it moving and i mean i always kind of use chick-fil-a as like the reference for things moving smoothly and mm-hmm. efficiently right and you know that's kind of like the goal is to get this that's thing definitely smoothly you know moving and running so that next day it just keeps going and going and going i'm not gonna lie we definitely look forward to uh holiday days during uh the week or on the weekend gives you a break <laughs> gives a, yeah we get to catch our breath <laughs> yeah definitely so so you go from what from from dropping glass bottles quick side note do you guys still use glass bottles today we do yeah uh-huh. what size um, are they what size? Yeah, because that's uncommon, right? So the industry, acts, the the bottled water industry started out in glass yeah, originally. Yeah, yeah, And there is a company called Mountain Valley that still operates in glass, and we are a licensed distributor for them. So okay. we don't make it in-house. We sure. we just um, we get the load from Mountain Valley, and then we uh, sell it to the customers who want Mountain Valley. Yeah. But they have five-gallon glass bottles, two-and-a-half-gallon. Um, they have 
one liters, and uh, third liters. Dude, that's a lot of glass. A lot of glass. <laughs> so you can imagine the mess that I made. Uh, I, I mean, I would have. I uh, my dad is in the glass business, but more about windows, doors, shop fronts, stuff like that. So they're heavy. I know the sound. Yep. It's uh, it's not a fun sound to hear, is it's, it? It's coupled with the sound of fear and just yeah. oh no yeah what have i done what have i done yeah exactly and even in a busy warehouse it stands mm-hmm. above everyone knows what's happening everyone knows yeah so from that kind of moment you get you know taken away you know, fork truck gets taken away from you where do you go from there do you get back to sweep in the floors no. oh i went and probably worked some, some more production lines um i did uh it, it was in college, actually. I I did a bit of closing up the warehouse, so that okay. was kind of the next bigger step for me. So I would work with our um, after hours uh, supervisor, and so I would get there at noon, yeah. and I would help him check in trucks. I would take trucks back to the parking lot, um, and at the end of the day, when all the trucks are in and all the employees have left, I would go around the building, mm-hmm. securing everything, making sure everything's turned off. I'd lock it, set the alarm, and go home. It'd be about 7.30. But that was just another responsibility that I had learned. It was a, a fu- it was definitely a fun gig. Um, yeah. Missed a lot of thunder tip-offs, though. Missed a lot of dinners. But, uh, you know, it was nice having to be able to sleep in, you know, kind of right. stroll into work around uh, noon. Yeah, that's not a bad life when Be, you're young, Being right? able to play, uh, quay, uh, or, uh, play a quick uh, 9 or 18 before yeah. you come in. Yeah. That was always nice. That's that's like the, uh, that's a great life. And mm-hmm. Until, until like you said, you you know, you have date nights to go to, or you have birthdays to go to, yes. or Thunder Games, or, you know, engagements that start at 6, 30, 7 o'clock, and you're like... Or especially when sorry, guys. <laughs> my supervisor would take off, and it would be just me closing the whole thing down. So yeah. that was always... That was always a little scary. Just, that's a lot. It's a lot. Dude, I hate the dark. So anything like that, <laughs> like, you, uh, you know, and I'm kind of like the cliche when I was a kid, like, you, you, know, you flick the light off downstairs, you run upstairs yes, as fast as I possible. Did, I did that too. It's that okay. That is me, right? But I can't imagine what it's like in a 10,000 square foot warehouse with just plastic and balls and creaking and well, just noise and wind and all the other stuff that goes yeah, on in the warehouse. Yeah, I mean, warehouse. during, you know, during operating hours, it's very loud. Yeah. There's a lot of mechanical, you know, moving parts. You know, it's just, it's normal because yeah. we're used to it. If ever, like, something's not running, it's usually it's like, okay, like, what's broken? And at night, like, everything's just shut off. It's like, man, this is, this is like, too quiet. Yeah. So, do you, and you go through from that, <clears throat> and you go through into, like, do you get to a point where, you know, where, where you're on a route, you get a truck now, and you kind of, like, because you're in college at this point, right? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was, was that time, before we go down the, the, I mean, I'm sure that you do get to a truck, but before we get to that time, what was your aspiration when you're in college? Do you want to go do into the business? Was it like the plan or was it like, eh, I'm gonna, I mean, the business is always going to be there. I'm going to try to do my own thing. Uh, that's a great question. I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, the business was always going to be there. It was always going to be an option for me. And uh, I know my family had that pegged uh, for myself. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, going into college or going through college, I should say, I had a lot of friends and, you know, they would have like internships out of state where they do like different things. And, you know, like that's like really cool that they yeah. get to have these opportunities just for the sake of doing something different. And just, you know, to look back on my previous experiences and, you know, be proud of like, hey, you know, like I did something different and that was OK. Like mm-hmm. I gained a good experience. I wanted that. And so um, I decided to do something different right out of college. Um, I went into public accounting for about a year. Um and I got a great education in working with or as a team, mm-hmm. solving accounting problems in different uh, in different businesses and industries, which was really cool. And I knew that I could take that uh, knowledge and experience that I got from there and apply it to um, Ozarka whenever I uh, decided to come back home. Yeah, that's a that, that's a great way to put it too, because you know some of the businesses out there, family businesses, you know it's it can be kind of a burden sometimes knowing that I always have a job here. Um, but also like you, you, you learn so much more by going out and like you said, working in a different business because you can bring those skills in and it's, you know, it's not like you get, I think you get probably a little bit more respect from, from your peers and from the people who, who eventually might even work for you because you've been away, not like you've been silver spoon fed. And, you know, it sounds like from what you said already, like you started sweeping the floors, Yeah, you know, like, there's, there's a lot of guys that 
knew me when I was sweeping floors and that are still working there today. Yeah. Uh, you know, they'd see me on the production line and kind of hoop and holler and uh, joke around with me, yeah. which is always kind of fun that, you know, we still have that relationship. But, you know, like, like you said, it's, it's a respect thing. And right. I want to prioritize their growth as an employee as long as they're with the company. Yeah. And I know that if I hold and carry myself a certain way within the company, you know, that leadership mm-hmm. goes a long way with yeah. them. And that's that's all I want to do is just set a good example. And you have to do it from the ground up. Right. Because if you just kind of go in there with, you know, a very carefree attitude, thinking like you own the place, so you're not going to get the reception you think you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to lean on them at certain times, right? And, you know, they're going to lean exactly. on you. And, you, you know, when it comes to you leaning on them, it's all, you need that respect. It's it's all teamwork. Yeah. I, I'm still, I've still got plenty of growth. I mean, to, to do, I mean, I've, Yes, I'm in the front office now after being on a truck and having my own route. I, you know, got, you know, the blessing to, you know, officially work at the front office. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those guys have still done, you know, certain jobs for a long period of time. And I've only done snippets of it here and there. I've done everything, but not for as long of a time as others have. And so, like you said, I don't know all the answers. I'll need to go to them to help uh, me with certain endeavors and vice versa yeah. so it's it's all teamwork in the end tell me about that truck experience in that first route of you driving and i mean that's that's big stage right i mean this give it yeah. a truck because those uh, trucks are not small they're boats yeah and you know these boats are they're they're big they're tall um they go 55 miles an hour downhill with the wind <laughs> With the pedal of the metal, I mean it's 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 I mean, it's, it's a big billboard as yeah. one is on wheels, and you know you got to keep that in mind because um, you know you're a representative of the company yeah. um, driving this huge truck. Like you, just because someone cuts you off, you can't flip them the bird because then it's like, well, hey, your company employee just flipped me the bird. Do your trucks have you know uh, call a number oh, yeah. on the side that says yes, you know, they do. tell me how good my driving is. Nobody calls that to say you've been driving well. No. You know? No, and um, it's funny. We've got some monitors on trucks that kind of gauge yeah. like how fast we're going and where we've been, which is... Brake pressure and stuff like that. Well, yeah, and, and yeah. it's helpful because, you know, uh, let's say a customer does... Or it doesn't have to be a customer. It could be just anyone on the road. And they could say you did something wrong, and, you know, they can go back and corroborate that evidence and say, yeah. well, you're not in the wrong. We'll right. just say we're so sorry this happened to you, you know, forgive yeah. us. It's, it's a big truck, you know, thanks for your, thank you for your patience and understanding. But, you know, my route was fun. I, uh, actually I, I got country routes. So I had to go all the way to, uh, Luther, um, Piedmont and, uh, Winniewood. Yeah. And it was, it's a long drive of those small towns, but when you, when you do it for so long, you, you know how to get around those small towns like the back of your hand. Winniewood's a long way away. Yeah. It's like a two-hour drive. Yeah. In a normal car. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a hike. Yeah. But, you know, the people out there are really nice because there's, there's oh so not so many people out there, right. but, you know, they needed me to kind of hit the outskirts because they needed help in that area. Yeah. And you get out there and, uh, you know, it's I will probably – several dozen customers out there but and they all know each other they all have their same daily routine yeah. and it's it's a really cool you know the small towns are great they're they're great communities um and you know if you know i say hey if you ever if you ever need anything you know, i'd give my number and actually a couple of weeks ago i get a call and i don't recognize the number i'm like hello it's like is this tanner's like yes it's like do you still work for ozarka i'm like yes it's like I don't know if you remember me, but I used to work at the, the grocery store up here at Luther. I'm like, oh my God, yes, of course. Like, yeah. how, how can I help? We haven't gotten water in a while and used to be our driver and we don't know what to do. No, I'll handle I'll it. Take care I'll, of it. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. So the the route never stops. Yeah. That's so cool though, because I mean, you're right. Like you, you build a connection, you build a relationship with, with people, regardless if they're in a small town or a big town. Mm-hmm. And you know, you give them, you give them your number, and you never, never expect them to call you. You know, no. And, but, but when they do, and you get a phone call like that from from years ago, right? You know, and it's just like, yeah, 
you know, I yeah. can help you. Like, yeah, that's so I, I, cool. I can, I can help. And, and that's, that's what we're in the business of, you know, yeah. we, we sell two things. We sell service and we sell water. Yeah. Um, in that order, uh, customer service is the bedrock of what this right. company is about because we've got several representatives like myself driving these trucks and we need to, you know, be kind, be friendly, create a relationship with customers because word of mouth is powerful and that word of mouth can spread to other friends mm-hmm. of, you know, your customers. Like, Hey, my, uh, my niece needs uh, water. Do you have, you know, can you set her up? It's like, yeah, I've, yeah. I've got a cooler on my truck. I can get her set up today. Right. Um, it's just, it's being just the friendly neighborhood water guy. Yeah. 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 It's, you probably, I mean, a lot of people, what fascinates me sometimes is when you, when you meet people and you, you know, you find out what business they're in and then you dive into that. And thankfully, fortunately through this podcast, I've learned so much about so many different businesses Mm -hmm. and, and kind of the ways that people have businesses and the things and the services that you never thought would be a thing, right? And water, people would be like, we can get it from a tap, right? But yeah. there's certain tastes, and when you dive into it, you know, it, there's all these all these things that people, you know, like the fact. But I'm sure there's so many people who just like it because of the people that you are, the service you provide, and, and the, the relationships that you have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a convenience. Mm-hmm. You know, we are offering the ability to where you don't have to worry about going to the grocery store, after work, you've had a long day, you know, we're there to drop off water to your house. So when you come home, you had a tip, like, oh, yeah. nice. My water's right there. It's I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's stuff like that, that is really self-gratifying to yeah, us. Yeah. Cause we'll get emails every once in a while. It's like, Hey, like, thanks so much. Like, I really appreciate it. Your guy was super nice today. You know, whoever your supervisor is, I hope he sees these kudos cause yeah. he, he deserves it. You know, that goes a long way. Um, and people just really like being friendly towards other people. And that's, that's what makes the world go around. Uh, and we aim to be a full water service provider. Mm -hmm. And, and if, like you say, you know, some people like to drink out the tap and that's fine. You know, we're not, we're not forcing you to drink our water. We're just offering an alternative. And if you don't want to drink tap, Hey, you know, we hope you use our product. That's, that's all it is. And, you know, we believe, and I, I prefer drinking my water out of, um, instead of the sink, yeah. but it's not for everyone and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's tastes are different, right? I mean, you got most of Oklahoma likes Dr. Pepper. I really, I don't mind it, but I prefer a Coke. Um, Dr. Pepper is amazing. With I Mexican know. Food. I know. So I good. Know. But my, my father-in-law, I mean, it, you can inject it into his veins, so you can probably draw it from his veins. <laughs> like he, he loves Dr. Pepper. Um, talking of, of the product though, let's dive into kind of the source and where it all comes yep. from and how that all starts. Like, because, I mean, obviously you've got the well at the facility in Oklahoma mm-hmm. City, but kind of what is, you know, I guess the origin story of, you know, going back to the family where, think, you know, thinking, yeah, I mean, we have this water source, let's sell water, and then we can go into the product. So in 1971, my grandfather purchased Eureka Water Company. Okay. Um, and the parent company at the time is Arrowhead Waters. Mm-hmm. And we were paying a royalty rate to Arrowhead Waters um, to use uh, Ozarka Spring Water name. Um, with that also comes their quality control uh-huh. team. Uh, and this quality control team would visit our plant periodically to make sure um, that we were doing the spring water treatment processes by the book. Because uh-huh. spring water, um, it's it's a special type of water because um, it comes from a spring water source as mm-hmm. opposed to uh, our Ozark drinking water, which comes from a 600 foot artesian well. Um, it's, it's definitely, it's, you can definitely d- um, taste the difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, and spring water has higher alkal- alkalinity uh, than drinking water. So they want to make sure, Hey, if you're going to use an, and our name, you know, yeah. we want to make sure right. it's the right product and exactly. you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, in 1974, uh, Arrowhead <clears throat> contacted our company and said, Hey, um, the spring is closing and we're getting out. Mm-hmm. Um, that also means that our, or our quality control team is moving to Florida. So you guys are on your own. It's not the call that you want from your water provider. So (laughs) they said, look, we can renegotiate our our, uh, royalty rate. Sure. 
um, for like a lesser deal if, if you guys still want to be in the business. And we countered and said, well, how about we pay you a one-time fee and we buy the name mm-hmm. Ozarka and use it into perpetuity? So they agreed. And in 1975, we um, have the name and we yeah. we're using it in perpetuity. Although technically we were bottling Ozark and Rinky water since 1972. Sure. After the spring closed, there were only two types of water. It was Ozarka drinking water and purified water. Um, and that was the case until 1983 when Arrowhead contacted us again and said, hey, just kidding, we're actually getting back in spring water. Uh, so they're relaunching their spring water, and right. we're just like, you're the one that told us to get out of it in the first place. Like, this is this is silly. Right. And like, sorry, like, the market's calling for it. We're going to get back in it. It's like, okay, well, we're going to do the same. So 1983, we find a uh, different um, spring source, mm-hmm. and it's the one that we're still using today. And from 1983 to 2012, we were bottling simultaneously Ozarka drinking water and Ozarka spring water. I know gotcha. the bottle's kind of mushy. It's 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 an older bottle, yeah. but that's uh, that's the label that we used okay. to have for yeah. Ozarka spring water. Um, up until 2012, um, we lost a litigation battle with Nestle Waters when the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals overturn a unanimous jury verdict that no longer allowed us to use the Ozarka spring water name. Um, we weren't down and out for too long. Yeah. Uh, we still had our source. And since our DBA is Ozarka water, our holding company is still Eureka water. So we use Eureka spring water, which is what this product is today. Okay. Is that kind of like a, I mean, the bottle is obviously a lot different and the brand's mm. different. That looks more of like a luxury type bottle. Yes. Right? Kind it of is. like a it's business. A pre- it's premium spring water. Premium, okay. That's, you know, this is economy. Your every day. This, yeah. yeah, economy is good yeah. stuff, it, which is still good. Uh, and then I just this see is, it just in the packaging. You right. can tell, it's, right? It's a difference. It, and, yeah. you know, spring water, it's, it's, it's more of a niche okay. target for customers and higher alkalinity, and it comes from a different source. It comes gotcha. from a spring source. Yeah. I've got a lot of friends who um, said, hey, like, I love your water. I get it all the time. And some of these are out-of-state friends. So, yeah, yeah. I see Ozark are like, you know, at the grocery store today in Houston. And it's... And it's this stuff right here. You know, this is the Nestle Ozarka. So yeah. this is their Ozarka spring water. And it's like, hey, like, instead of going into this giant spiel that I just told you now, right. it's just more of, appreciate thank, that. thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. It's, uh, <laughs> Thumbs up. Yeah. It's uh, not quite our product, but, you know, it's the thought that counts. Yeah. Um, so it's, I get a lot of people who say, you know, what's the difference? And that long yeah. spiel is, is the difference, but it's. No one has the time to <laughs> right. listen yeah, to yeah, that yeah. Uh, litigation history lesson. But it's still, but for those who do, it's it's very unique. It's very cool. Um, a lot of people didn't realize that was going on or that was the case. Right. Um, so that's inherently the difference in why there's two different types of Ozark out there. Yeah. The one with the stars, the Texas one, you don't want, to, you don't want that stuff. No. We are, uh, <laughs> no. No. Um, this is... Uh, made in Oklahoma product we're proud of it yeah like and I know you kind of touched on it earlier and we can we can delve into it right now but um I feel like it's a good segue yeah because you have the Mayo logo on yeah, your vans MIO. Your trucks. <clears throat> um yeah we're we're part of the Made in Oklahoma coalition and it's a really fantastic coalition to be a part of um if you don't know about it i highly encourage listeners to certainly go check it out and uh, use oklahoma uh, made in oklahoma products because all that money you spend on those products just goes back into our right. state as opposed to buying something that goes and benefits another state yeah um, and so. nestle's not exactly a small company I no <laughs> right like God, they're they wouldn't multi, they won't be hurting if you go mul- buy yeah oklahoma multi-billion products, dollar company yeah the um i'm glad you cleared that up because a lot of people you know, no, a lot of people think the same thing, right? I think, oh, it's Ozaka, it's all the same thing. Well, when you look at it closely, it's two completely different companies, two completely different logos, two totally different, like, full names are different, right? And, um, and, and taste different. and all the other stuff exactly. that goes into it, right? Exactly. Um, one of the things I noticed kind of from, from when, when I did the tour with you is that um, you guys obviously, you know, we're kind of touching on it a little bit, but you, it's, you, know, you do a lot of different products, but also, like, the process in, in, you know, that comes out of the water that comes out of the artesian well that's, mm-hmm. that's at the facility, 
it's quite a cool process like if you're interested in that thing to kind of understand it and how you know the water goes through all its phases and then before it gets to the bottle and before it gets to you like it's you know it's fascinating and i'm sure like you know it like the back of your hand now <laughs> yeah i mean i think any any engineering buff would be very you know would, would nerd out at, uh-huh. at um at the process it's it's like uh seeing one of those episodes of how it's made on national yeah. geographic uh but you know it starts from you know the well and we had drilled the well uh in the early 70s mm-hmm. and then we built that new facility around it uh, you know the well just wasn't there. We had to we had to drill yeah. into it, and it's a private source water um, into the Garber Wellington. And so we pulled that water um, out of the Garber Wellington aquifer, and it then goes into um, our distillers. And so those distillation units they superheat the water and it vaporizes um, the water to where water that doesn't have any impurities in it will be siphoned off into another holding tank yeah. and then the and the water that has impurities in it still will just kind of be flushed and run back through the municipal system after uh we have collected the purified dis- distilled water uh, we run it through uh, one micron filtrations which is a fancy word of saying really really small filters that yeah. um get out any other uh, nitty gritty stuff that um, the distillation units may have missed. Mm-hmm. Uh, after the multi barrier filtration process, uh, it'll hit um, ozonation, which helps clean the water further. It'll get hit with um, UV, uh, ultraviolet rays, to also help further clean it. And, mm-hmm. um, and then we add uh, minerals. Um, back to taste for drinking water. Gotcha. We wouldn't add minerals back to distilled water because distilled water is free of yeah, any yeah. impurities. Yeah. And then once we add minerals back, we finally collect it in one of those really tall uh, holding tanks, and they can hold about 60,000 gallons, which is quite a So big, much water. <laughs> very, yeah, it's, it's a ton. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll darn near go through half that holding tank just in – a couple of weeks that's uh, crazy, we, we run a lot of water um and yeah that's and when they're in those holding tanks they're they're ready to go yeah for just for people listening for context that don't understand how much sixty thousand gallons of water is what what would you say the average swimming pool household swimming pool holds oh gosh just your average pool how you know well how much water is that do you know off the top of I, your head? I don't know off the top of my head and it's, I, it's probably less than sixty thousand gallons shortly mm-hmm. i would assume so Anyway, that's just some me thinking of like how can I how can I put that in a context? Build? It's a lot of freaking water. I've seen these tanks; they're massive. I know, I know, fifteen hundred gallons is like a just like a kiddie pool. Wow. Just you know something. Yeah. Probably about nine. I'd say six feet in diameter. Maybe it's like fifteen hundred yeah. gallons and ones you can buy in Walmart. Yeah, exactly. God, it's crazy. If, and that's if you like fill it all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, that's nuts, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Just to put it in the context, that go into kind of like you know, like the amount of the, the the product line that you have, because a lot of people might think that I can only buy Ozarka drinking water either in a small bottle in the gas station, or I can get the five gallon buckets that I see in my office, right? Obviously, there's a lot more to it, and and I think just for education of people listening, they need to know that you can. It's not you know, you don't have to. You can buy you know, different ones as well. Full water service provider. That's, that's the goal. And every person is going to have different likes and dislikes. And we want to cater to, um, as many customer bases as we possibly can. So we have, like you said, the five gallon, um, uh, bottles that go on, Mm -hmm. uh, water dispensers. We have a line dedicated for that. Um, that same line also uses three gallons, Mm -hmm. um, we also have a one gallon and two and a half gallon production line. <clears throat> and then lastly, we have a half liter production line that does 16.9 ounce bottles and 12 ounce bottles all the way up to a liter yeah. and as small as eight ounce. So a really wide range of products that we offer to anyone who wants to wants a catalog to yeah. look at what we got. And I, I was kind of surprised you guys, I mean, I didn't think of this and this is probably just because I'm, 
was just generally surprised and I unaware, but you guys don't just do businesses. You do home deliveries too. Yes, home and office. Yeah. Um, we have we have about 30 routes and we cover the greater 66 um, counties of Oklahoma City, mm-hmm. not including the uh, kind of that northeast corner where Tulsa sure. is. We don't we don't we don't go that far. Uh, and really, we don't go. You know, we don't get in a truck and go all the way to like Ardmore or right. go to Guymon. You know, I mean, we've got distributors that will help us. But just kind of the greater metro area and Winningwood would yeah, be an yeah. exception. Why well, I don't know, I know but hey, like, it, when it you works. said that, I was like, really? We yes, yeah, so we go as far south as Winningwood, as far north as um, Stillwater, mm-hmm. as far west as El Reno, and then. As far east as Holdenville, and if you don't know what that is, just it's close to Shawnee. It's a long way away. Long way, but a fairly Home of good. Boone Pickens. Yes, uh, a fairly good uh, delivery area. Yeah. Um, but that's it's you know lot, not limited just to um, buildings or, right. or uh, companies rather. You know, we we uh, go to any any residential home that wants uh, service. Yeah. Which is nice. So. Yeah, that's that's really cool to offer the whole service and not just be like, oh, we're purely businesses only because they're the bigger accounts and they're you know it's it's nice to, like I said, full service water provider and and I mean it's, you know it it's kind of like I'm thinking of the milkman, right? The yeah. milkman goes to every you know as many houses as he can mm-hmm. and, and it's it's really cool to. You know, and I, when we did the tour, I saw the map, and I was like, "Wow!" I mean, maps fascinate me because you never see maps ever again. But just that map on the wall in the office, just like, "Wow, this is this is the place that we cover." And you know, it, it's cool to see. But obviously, the goal is to grow and, yep. and you know take over some more space and serve more people and and just kind of get you know more more of your product into into the hands of more Oklahomans. Yeah, that's the that's that's the name of the game, yeah. and that's why it's imperative that our uh, our route salesmen go out there, uh, and it's uh, service with a smile, because um, you never know who might be looking for water, and right. you know it's just kind of slowly building relationships, um, and just kind of, you know, being able to get a gauge on, you know, like, hey, like, is this someone that I can uh, uh, speak with about, you know, encouraging them to get service? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's about just kind of planting a seed. Yeah. You know, the worst thing they can do is say no. And that's fine, you know, you know, yeah. it's not for everyone, but hey, you know, we can always be persistent and say, all right, well, that's okay. I'll, I'll try again in two weeks and uh, see if I can't get you to take, uh, have your your niece or your friend uh, get set up. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you, you never know. And it's, it's, um, you know, it's always, it, sometimes people get, you know, a little gun shy when it comes to sales. Mm-hmm. It's just, just having a conversation. Yeah. And, you know, the worst possible thing is just they can say no, and that's it, and right. and that's okay. Yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, the, it's the training that goes into it, and I'm sure when you started driving around, you know, you're, the last thing you want to do is ask people for their business, right? It's not a comfortable thing to do, but you just get better at it, and, you be, you, you know, you just you're, you be yourself, and, and eventually they're going to keep, you know, the good thing is you're on the route, right? They're going to keep seeing you for the most part. Yeah, and, you know, and you don't even have to go in there guns blazing. So it's like, hey, like, do you know right. anyone else who can take it? It's like, hey, like, do you enjoy our services? You know, do you enjoy it? You know, do you have it set up at home? Yeah. Uh, just find different ways to introduce that into conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and that's, it's as easy as that. Yeah. Are there some days when you're in the office doing the accounting and you think, oh, I'd just love to be in a truck driving through the country right now? <laughs> kind of. Depending on how hot it is outside. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those, I mean, those drives are, they're long, but you know, they're, they're pretty. Yeah. And you know, I, I've got, you know, a couple of different employees I've got to manage. I've got my own workload that I got to take care of. I've got, um, uh, my uncle or my CFO who want to give me several projects and heck, if I'm on a route, I don't have to worry about any of that. I'm my own boss. I was like, I'll just listen to the radio or sports and just be in my own little world and sell water and try to, uh, try to make new relationships. And so there, yeah, there are definitely those days where, um, being on a truck would be easier as opposed to, yeah. um, being a boss. Um, there are, there are definitely those days, but it's, yeah, you gotta take the go the bad. You know, some some days, um, I'm going down a three hour wormhole on YouTube. So I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> 
and there are other days when I'm on a route yeah. and uh, this true story this happened I'm in Luther and I'm two stops away from finishing and I'm going down a dirt road and it's so bumpy uh, my truck dies and I can't get a tow truck to come get me for two hours so I'm just sitting there just like I what can you do like right, tr- yeah. truck's dead you can't yeah. do anything and uh, I had two I had two customers left like I was so close to being done and so I called I was like well I'm, I called my uncle I was like hey I'm just I'm stuck here it's like well have you finished all your customers it's like well no I've got two left it's like did you call them well I didn't think about that <laughs> I should probably do that and yeah. so I oh I I called them and I said hey like I'm so sorry I my truck broke down I can't do anything about it um, I know it sounds kind of weird, but like, if you come to me, I can complete the sale for you. And one of them's like, yeah, okay, I'll take you up on it. I'm like, okay. And so I'm, you know, out in this country road and I throw up the, uh, the bay doors and yeah. I do the transaction right there, put them in his trunk. And he's like, well, thanks for uh, taking care of me today. Appreciate it. He's like, yeah, thanks for coming all this way to. Thanks for meeting me. Halfway. Yeah. Thanks for meeting me halfway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And so the tow truck finally got there. And I, I don't remember the, all the technical wirings about it, but there was a, a battery cable mm-hmm. that came off, and all you do is just kind of snug it back in, and then the truck would start. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's all we had to do? And, like, I, I, I didn't Dude, I didn't, me I didn't and you were exactly the I same. I had no idea. Like, I have no mechanical skill I, what to, whatsoever. I thought the worst about man. Like, something happened, like, inside yeah. the engine. Like, something's ruined. I broke, you know, I broke something. It's going to be my fault. It's right. like, no, you... These country roads are hard on trucks. The wire just popped out. All you have to do is just snag it back in. It's like, man, he's going to be so pissed <laughs> when he realizes the tow bill just to yeah. plug in a cord or a, a <laughs> but wire. it won't happen again. That's and it won't thing, happen right? again. And that was the last time I was on a truck, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, so back to, I mean, you, you the gla- breaking of the glass on this truck incident. It sounds like you come to a time where you're like, okay, now we need to move you on. Yeah. Now we need to move you on again. Let's get you to, uh, where, get you're, you to where you're not operating uh, any vehicles. <laughs> They can start calling me Crash. <laughs> uh, simple times, though, right? There's yeah. Sometimes you're in the office and you're just like, ah, oh, simple times. It'd be great to go back to just driving around in a truck. And you it's, know, it's a certain piece about it, right? It's a certain piece. It's also the, the relationships and friends you have made through your customers because they genuinely care about you and vice versa. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten, you know, tips on my route from people saying hey like thank you so much for taking care of me he's like yeah. you didn't have to do this give me a tip like that's so nice right. i really appreciate it um and just asking them about you just you get to know them you get to know little intimate details of their life and then you know one day uh unfortunately you're you're pulled off on the route to yeah. uh, serve bigger and better things with the company and but that lady still has my number, and if she wants to yeah. call me, she still can. Yeah, no, I, I mean, just listening, just to her, I love the fact that you've literally gone through every single job to get to where you are now. Like, you resonate with everybody on the line. You know everybody. You know, when we when we did the walkthrough, you know, you, you know, sometimes when you walk, walk through a business with someone who's in a position of authority or a part of the family, you know, you can definitely tell if they have a, a really good relationship with people working. Because sometimes nobody says a word to you Mm -hmm. right or you get what i saw with you is people giving you a fist bump good to see you asking you how's family and all this stuff and like it's it's cool to see right and i'm sure you know you it's great for you to sometimes just go into the into the warehouse just to say hello to the guys because you might not have seen them for two or three days because they're busy you're busy but just to go chop it up and get out of the office sometimes feels great well they got a lot of me because i had to i had to go work this past weekend on you did i did i had to go i got called in saturday and sunday to help uh, on the production line while the the marathon was going and if you didn't get to uh, the plant early enough to start yeah i can't you didn't tell you, get, you you didn't get to the plant well that or all the parking spots were gone yeah because everyone i just i didn't think about it and everyone just swarms that area because it's right by the boulevard well, the, and it's the new it's, finish line is right yeah it's like 100 feet away yeah. and there's just so many people bustling about and it's and it's like what are these guys doing open on sunday it's like Hey, we got work. We got work. To work. We got work to do. Yeah. Oh, I, 
thinking of that, I much would have preferred being on a production line than finishing the marathon because I, I was miserable when I did. Did you do it? Oh, uh, yeah. And it was the half of the full. I'm, I did the full and I'm still feeling the pain. Good for you. <laughs> like, it was brutal. So I never understood this before, but when you get halfway or you get to like mile 14 and 15 and you're as far away as you can possibly be, <laughs> the Devon Tower looks so small. Oh, no. And you're at like mile 14, 15, and you're just like, you really question why you're doing this. It's like, so is my Uber app working today? <laughs> yeah, you're like, but exactly. But I somehow managed to finish. Um, Good for a you. A lot of old people in front of me who were definitely better running than I am finished in front of me. And that was kind of like a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a humbling, I think. But um, yeah, it was fun. But it was good to see because you come around that last corner right in front of right in front of the plant, right mm -hmm. in front of the facility. Yeah. So, you know, no Can't doubt. Can't miss it. No, there was people everywhere, thankfully, cheering me on. I was, there were still people there when I finished, so that was a plus. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. And for you, it's cool to be, you know, just regardless of a business perspective, but it's cool to be a part of the business community as well and be close to downtown where you are and have that, you know, because for a long time, you know, with that without that new road going in, you're just kind of part of you know, you're a little, little bit away from yeah. see Now it's kind of coming to you, isn't it? So that's kind of cool to see so, business development in that area so as well. The, yeah, the old I-40 used to go almost directly over our plant. Uh -huh. And so we were almost, it was kind of like a, a wall, if you will. Like we were like anything north of I-40 is where it was at. Right. Everything south was kind of forgotten. Mm -hmm. it, it, to me, that's what it felt like. And then, you know, I-40 got taken down. And the new boulevard came in and it really just opened up everything. And, you know, I'm, I'm only, you know, I'm only 29, but I feel like I've grown up with this city as mm -hmm. it has also grown up as well. Yeah. And it's very cool to see how far the city has come. It's, it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it's, it's a happening place. I know the the neighborhood around where our plant is. Um, I know it's got big plans for the future. Uh, with maps and other development, and it's going to be really special and really cool whenever it's that's all said and done. It, I don't think it'll be for a couple of years, but it, it'll be really cool just to be in a in a happening place again. Because, like you said, you know, there's a brewery right across the street from us. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, there's three there's three breweries yeah, within um, walking distance. Within, yeah, within a hundred yeah. feet of us, yeah. which is because Angry Scott's just north of you, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sure is. And, you know, then, you know, social capitals. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple, another hundred, 200 feet away, the, the, the new parks over there, the convention center. And, you know, we can, we've got a great view to it. And it's yeah. just, it's, it's so cool. Like being in that park and I was like, wow, like we've got a great view of the skyline just like right here. Yeah. And we didn't have that, you know, when the old I-40 was up, it's just kind of, it's very cool to mm -hmm. see. It's cool to be in the heart of um, you know, be uh, in the heart of downtown again. Yeah. Not that we weren't ever, but it's it's almost like a breath of fresh air with the new development that's going on. Right. And I'm so excited for the future. Yeah, because I mean, with the new road coming in, you're getting a lot more eyeballs <clears> on you <throat> that probably never would have driven past you in the you know coming down Boulevard. Like you wouldn't, you never came into the city that way before, right? You know, yeah, you always kind of go off Sheridan, come well, in from the other side. Yeah, and you know the I it was it was elevated, yeah. so like you couldn't see down below, you just couldn't yeah. see the roof. Now you can like it's like one of the first things you see when yeah. you get on the Boulevard. Yeah, or one of the awesome. last, depending on which route you take. Right. No, it's awesome. Well, mate, I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for sharing the story. It's um, you know I I, I look forward to the 50th year celebration i know it's a little late but covid has done that to a lot of businesses so yeah looking forward to <clears throat> seeing how you guys celebrate that um you know it's it's great to see the trucks all over the city uh and now i know a lot more about it so it's great to have more context and um looking forward to pl playing golf soon we need to tee it up yes now that the uh, the golf courses are back they're getting green the grass is turning the sun's coming out hopefully the wind stops soon because it's playing golf in this awful is terrible <laughs> Um, Let me fix my slice first. Yeah, then you, I then know. you got a deal. Oh, it's so bad at the moment. But um, for people listening, I'll put the links to um, the Osaka website and all the products. You can go check them out. And also put the links to uh, MIO as well, as so you can check out there and all the made in Oklahoma businesses um, because they're great. And, and you should definitely go support those. We've done podcasts with them in the past, and, and it's been great to, to share their stories of all Oklahoma made products and 
people who've started their entrepreneur journey, even if it's just selling candles or a small business. It's, it's really cool to see. So Tana May, thanks you so much for coming down, share some stories. Yeah, Mike, thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. I it's, appreciate it. You can see why I love doing what I do. It's, it's a blast. So for people listening, I'll put the links in the description and we will catch you next episode. Cheers. Cheers. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling Oklahoma stories through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com and definitely on Instagram at oklahomahof. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.